Today we start a brand new league campaign. It's season four, it's our second season in League One. Let's see what we can do. This has been a very awkward summer so far, and I just mean on players in and out. As per normal, I have missed out on all of my first choice targets, most of my second choice targets, a fair chunk of my third, and you can see the list just keeps going down. We've also lost some key players haven't been able to replace with quality. Well, we could have, but I wasn't paying a grand a week. So much to get through. Let's just get to it. This Quavis Gamer, my name is Duncan. Welcome back to the Elgin Experiment. <laughs> So hi everyone, welcome in, and so we're going to start on this screen today, and it is the salary per annum. So, as I have mentioned before, if you've never read the book Soconomics, please go and read this, that's quite an interesting book. It talks about loads of stats to stuff to do with football, and a lot of things that you'd maybe think weren't true, but I statistically they are, and vice versa, and a whole other stuff. But, one of the things that is big indicator of success is, team with the highest salary is most likely to win the league, and as you can see from here... Pretty much you expect an Inverness run away with this league. I would anyway. And then Air Jones comfortably second between ourselves, including the South. Excuse me. Battling for third. And there's a drop to the rest. So we, going by the salary, should be fourth. And we are predicted this season. Any t Why is this running so fucking slow? Hi. There we go. <laughs> to finish third this year, which... Is an improvement on last year. And uh, I, I would take it. Not convinced by it. But I would take it. Do we start with the games or the transfers? Fuck it, let's go transfers. <laughs> because we have so much to get through. And we need to start at the end of last season. Now the two players that we had on pre-contracts were Sonny Aluko. Are you in the list to... No. Uh, Straker from Kilmarnock on a free. We have put him out on loan to Bonnie Rig Rose for the season. And Grant Leach. Didn't realise. Uh, we've signed him from Rangers on a free. He was the, they were the two lads we got on prees. I was going to keep him around the first team, but decided a year first team football, maybe get those technicals off a bit, would be a bonus. He's also on Bonnie Rig Rose for the season. But let's get down to all of the business that we did in... After we do the outs. Jack Barrett left the club on a £4.2,000 deal to Aston fucking Villa of all teams. He is in the first team squad, bafflingly. Uh, but he will never see a game. There is a profit or a sell-on fee. We'll probably sell that in a year or two and get some money for it. We also sold Alex Roberts to our broth for £4,000. We loaned out a new sign-in, which we'll talk about. This one hurt me. Ennis Cameron also left our broth for £3,500. His contract was up at the end of the season. He had no intention of renewing. So we didn't offer him out, but our broth came in. Uh, he wanted to go. I had a choice to make. Hard choice, don't get me wrong. But... Uh, we sold them. It says there are 40 goals in 62 league games. I think that's got to be actually a bit more. So his first season with us, he scored 24 goals in 31 appearances in all competitions. And then last season, he scored 23 in 44. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Great bit of business for us. We're going to miss him. But yeah, he's away. The fact that our both have a front two... Of two players that I never played together. Uh, concerns me. And they're not even starting. Wow. I could have paid that wage. I just refused to. To another player. Not to him. Uh, did we sell anyone else? Yeah. Sam Paul. Also went to fucking our broth. <laughs> our broth brought all of our players it feels like. But they, uh, we sold him. For £3.8,000. I didn't even check. Are you playing for them? Fuck off. No. I'm glad that our three of our starters have just, well, potential starters, uh, could have become backups in the division above. Mustafa Olegunju, he left for Glentorin in a fee. 
Uh, worth a total of £2.6,000, but we've received £2.2 up front. Daniel Dolan has went to, you guessed it, or both, for a fee of £1.6,000, rising to one point nine. Lewis Duncan has went on loan to Spartans until the end of the season. His contract will be up then. They're paying all of his wage. Yeah. Uh, another new player has went on loan to Aloha and Grant Leach, as we've already seen. So let's talk about the rest of the ends then. And we start with Ross Matthews, 30-year-old central midfielder. He's coming as a squad option. He'll play, not as a Carolero, but as a box-to-box midfielder. Second choice, uh, centre mid on the left-hand side for us. On a year's deal, we have an option to extend. No, we don't. I thought we did. Strange. But yeah, he's only on a year's deal. Not really expecting much from him. But yeah, he was our first midfielder. We followed that up with the signing of Jamie Hamilton, a guy I tried to sign in January. But, uh, Brown loan, sorry, but didn't want to pay the wages he was on. Says he's a fringe player, wide centre back. He's playing as a ball playing defender for us. He has all the technicals for it. The physicals are actually pretty good as well. It's just his fitness is an issue. I prefer my centre has to be taller, but hey ho. Uh, he's a decent League One player, good championship player potential. May have a problem with injuries. He's another player who we have signed on a one-year deal. Yes, he's signed on a one-year deal, but we have the option to extend. So definitely going to see how he pans out over the course of the season. We then signed Peter Phillips, 17-year-old young attacking midfielder. Again, one-year deal, option to extend. Uh, came through Barry. Rangers signed him, released him. Did he only go and loan at Rangers, actually? No, it was a free transfer to Rangers. Um, we then took him on a free ourselves. And he's out on loan at Alwa. So we'll see how he develops and if we're going to keep him on next year. We then sign Christian Webster on a free transfer from Rangers. One year deal, option to extend. You can kind of see my business or my, my thought here. He, and this is going to come in as fifth choice centre half. He's a League Two level centre half, but he is basically a fourth choice centre half now. Actually has looked pretty good in the games he's played for his in the Viaplay Cup. But yeah, jump reach at 18, 6 foot 4, not real pacey, decent enough strength, good fitness, heading's a bit poor, but he's good marking, tackling could definitely improve as well. But yeah, could be an option, another guy who will either do for a year, or we extend. Ross Crooks, another young number 10 we brought in, on a free, one year deal, option to extend. He is on loan at Dundella in Ireland. Another island. Oh, God. Oh, I've been trying to keep that one down for so long. Uh, we then signed Devine on your match eight as well on the same day. He is a 19-year-old right winger who is better than Bruno Davidson. He's now, <laughs> weirdly, like third choice for that role. League two, one-year deal, option to extend. You know the script. I was just trying to pad out the squad with kind of young-ish options. What I liked about him was, from what I could see, because we had him in trial, we couldn't see his full attributes, but what I liked was his physicals, a little bit of pace, which is good, decent dribbling, passing technique is all fine, good flair, so he is maybe going to be a bit more creative. Crossing could definitely be worked on, but, you know, again, youngster for a year, he'll be fine. Kieran Freeman then signed after we were getting rid of Sam Paul. We knew we needed a new right back, and Kieran Freeman is that man. He prefers to play wing-back, but he is playing as a complete wing-back for us. Uh, Right-back, he has made two appearances, one as a bench, and one starting with two assists already. Excuse me, he's a very good attack full-back. I think he could be a very good player for us. He's on a two-year deal. Decent money. But yeah, for the next two seasons, first choice right-back, we're sorted. I am happy. Ben Payton was our next signing. 26-year-old central midfielder. He's our new starting ball-winning midfielder, although he's made four appearances. He's played in all of the cup games. Two subs, two starts. Hasn't been convincing. We've had some of them off both starts because he's been playing really poor. But on paper, he's a good League One central midfielder. Has potentially been a championship-level player. Doubt it. On paper, he's our second-best center mid, but he's our best ball winner. We're keeping him. His strength is poor, but everything else for me... From the rest of his physicals, his mentals, and, you know, for the two things I need him to do, and the fact he can pass a ball, which generally does help, may play him on support, actually. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, I think he'll be a decent enough signing, just needs to find a bit of 
form. We then signed Chris Ide because at this point I had no strikers. He's 19 years old. He's on a one-year deal. Option to extend for a year. Blah, blah, blah. He came on a free from Rangers. Yes, he was on loan at Kelty Hearts last year. Made 15 appearances, scored six goals, got two assists. Uh, for us, he's made two... No, he's not. He's made four appearances, scored one goal. Not much to say about him. Decent enough pace. Finishing first touch poor. Head is pretty decent. Technique's okay. Six foot. I think he'll be fine. He's been signed as a third choice striker. At the moment, second choice striker, actually. But we'll get maybe into that a bit more. Uh, then we signed Max Clark. He is our new first choice left back for the next two seasons. I think technically and physically he'll be okay. His stats are pretty decent. I think he'll be solid enough. He's 30 years old. He is only going to regress. We know that. But for a year or two, I think he'll be fine. Uh, we don't really have... Even if he's first choice this player, he's on as much as he's a star player, that's what we promised him. He's on £350 a week. I can kind of eat that next season if he becomes second choice in there. But right now, he'll be a decent first choice. Left back, Jack Stott is the next player and he is our first choice central midfielder. I've been playing him as a box-to-box -box midfielder. Mentions that central mid on attack. He's made two appearances. He has scored two goals and trust me, one of his goals is a fucking peach and we will absolutely get to that. He's a league one player. Potentially be a uh, Premier League player. We got him on a free from Middlesbrough. Uh, but yeah, decent enough technicals, decent enough mentals, decent enough physicals. Has a lot of improving he could do. That determination of time is he probably won't. He's on £600 a week um, on a two-year deal. Hopefully. <laughs> God, I hope this one will work out. Olagunja went, so my plan of three centre-backs became four, and we signed Rico Brown. Six foot two. Uh central defender I think he looks quality for where we are great heading marking tackling can pass the ball great good jumping reach decent enough pace to be fair decent enough strength happy enough with his mentals concentration's good decision's pretty decent good determination good leadership which we need positioning's acceptable anticipation is good so yeah happy with Rico Brown he is our first choice uh, central defender alongside Hamilton. Kieran Kinnear has came in on loan from Celtic. 17 years old, 5'11". Jumping reach is a bit of an issue, but everything else, I think he'll be fine. I think he'll be an adequate backup. We're not paying any of his wages. I don't really see a downside. He is a League One level player, so he's our third choice and a half. Webster makes it four. You can see, you can see it there. That is literally the order I'm also playing them in. Uh, we then signed Calvin Riley on loan from Queen's Park. He's our second choice left back. His physicals are good. Has a fair bit to work on in his technicals. But his tackling, his passing, his marking techniques okay. So it's more the crossing first touch dribbling. But as a backup option for either full back position, I generally think he'll be okay. And then our latest two signings, which I have just done. Sadat Anaku has come in as our new first choice striker on a two-year deal. We had to get a work permit, which was rejected, we appealed, we got it. He's came from Dundee United, where he wasn't a goal scorer. The fans are happy as him as a replacement for Cameron, but they're different type of players. He's a pressing forward. I'm dubious on his goal scoring abilities, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but physically, he's very, very good. He's got determination, which one hand is good for the game. He might continue to develop a little bit more, we'll need to wait and see. I just think he's probably going to be best a second striker, so we might try and bring in another striker and change our shape from time to time. Uh, he's a leading League One player, could be a championship level player, but yeah, we signed him on a two-year deal. And then Ali Kut has just signed as well. He is 28 years old, squad player, but he is going to be our first choice right midfielder. Wilkinson is declining. Uh, another guy we've got on a free, £500 a week, big chunk of change. But that is all of our transfer business in terms of our transfer budget. Our 50 grand is now zero. It was up 50 grand, even though it started lower. We have a minimum of 20 grand next year. Interesting. Uh, our wage budget is now £10,687, and I have £10 free. Yep, that's all because somebody went on loan. Um, 
So yeah, we, we've extended that to the maximum we could. That is a lot of money um, that we are genuinely spending a week. And I, I actually am now slightly paranoid. Hold on. 10, 6, 8, 7. There's 52 weeks a year. Our wage budget is apparently £555,724 a year, which is less what our salary per annum was. But that's obviously not including something. I won't judge. We'll just pretend maybe the calculator was wrong. Today we're going to be taking on Star uh, Clyde Away, sorry, and Sterling at Home. We do a Peter Head coming up near the end of the month as well, which we'll probably want to try and get in at some point. But let's look at our via play. Cup Group A. We finished the group third on six points. We actually did pretty well. Uh, we scored ten goals. We conceded nine. We did well, uh, except from the last game. But we took on Brecon in the first game. And honestly, it didn't actually go to plan. We were 2-0 down by the end of the first half. Now, I just get my head. End of last episode, I said we were talking to a former player. We had a contract offer accepted accepted that the offer was good enough for McGrath, just also McGrath scored different McGrath, centre half we had on loan from Hibernian, end of the day though he chose to sign for a English club, I think it was an English club who were paying more than we were but yeah, we went 2 now down I made a raft of changes and then Ide made it 2-1 that was his first and only goal so far for the club, Webster actually had near enough a man in match performance, McKeever though made it 2-2 when he came on at half time, we then took the lead on 80 Two eighty-three minutes. Phillips shot from distance. He's a well known now. Uh, but yeah, clipped in off the crossbar and then made it four. Wilkinson with the header. And we got lucky. We had a really poor first half. But as you can see, Webster had a good game. Clark, Matthews, Phillips is not here. Ide, Brown and Freeman all came on and done fantastically well. This is Freeman getting the assist on that corner for the Wilkinson header. We then followed up with a 2-1 loss to Greenock Morton, which... It's fair enough. Uh, championship side. And yeah. They missed a penalty. Hogarth made a great save. But they did eventually take the lead on 59 minutes. Good strike. They then took. Well they then doubled their lead let's be honest. On 77. Poor defending overall. We did get one back. Gives a little sliver of hope on 80 minutes. Header for Kinnear. The lad who made his debut on loan from Celtic. But it wasn't enough to pull it back. And we lost 2-1. But we then did follow that up with a 2-0 win over Kelty Hearts. They had a goal ruled off. Uh, ruled outside for offside on three minutes. And then nothing really happened until the second half. 51 minutes on the clock. McKeever opened the scoring with that back post header. Which we love. And then Wilson doubled the lead on 59 from the penalty spot. Giving us a 2-0 win. Then this game happened, an absolute clusterfuck. This is a goal, though. We will see Stott's great goal and his other goal. But, uh, yeah, that we were really, really out of form. Because then we beat the same side 6-1 last season. When we went 3-0 down, I was livid. Ayunga got a decent header, but we didn't really defend well at all. Again, though, Leinster are championship side, but then they doubled it. No, they picked up the run of Joel Nubley. On 16 minutes, then on 25, we went three down. Uh, I'm pretty sure I made five subs at half time. I was livid. But let, watch this goal from Stott Brown. Guess the assist. But what a finish from Stott. Gave us a little bit of something. It wasn't hope, but it gave us a bit of something. But on 50, Livingston ended that. We just couldn't defend to save ourselves in this game. We then made it 4-2 on 59. McKeever, back post header. And then they made it 5 on 69. And we just crumbled. But we did make it 5-3. McKeever got the ball to start, who got his second of the game. And that was it. And that leads us right up to now, where we take on Clyde. And this is our team. Molden is in goals. Back four of Freeman, Hamilton, Brown and Clark. Payton and Stott make up our midfield. Stott, though, will be changing now to a centre midfielder. 
on attack. Uh, Coote, Whitaker and McKeever will make up our attacking midfield three, with Anaku leading the line. On the bench will be Webster, Kinnear, Riley, Gillies, Matthews, Onyemachi, Davidson, Wilkinson and Ide Hunter has not made the bench. I am trying to sell him because he's on £500 a week. Uh, and Holworth is also not on the bench. Our captain, Hewitt, is uh, suspended for today's game. I've done a lot of talking for 20 minutes. <laughs> but yeah, this is first league game of the season. We are, the board still want the top half finish. Going by the wages we're spending and the season preview, we should be in a playoff spot this year. We should have been last year, but we did fall away. Got to hope for a bit more consistency. I would say we are definitely weaker in a lot of positions, but I'm hoping the overall squad quality has kind of came up a bit. Not convinced it has, but yeah, still probably in the loan market for a couple of players, maybe, uh, as long as we can get them on like no wages. If we can move Hunter on, like, amazing. Uh, Wicker has, no. Well, Lewis Duncan has informed us he will not be renewing his contract with us. He wanted to opt to leave at the end season on free. We tried to sell him. Nobody would buy him. We offered him out for loan. And the club that he's at took him on loan, paying his full wages, so he's essentially gone already. We tried to offer Cameron a new contract, but informed by his agent he had no intention of signing. was going to see his options at the end of the season. Then our growth came in for him. Whitaker has done the exact same he's informed us. He he is, although officially informed us now, not in a contract negotiation, that he wants to assess options at the end of his contract. Fair enough. I am not trying to force him out the door. I have transfer listed him just to let clubs know, look, we are we're capable we're willing to listen. But uh ideally I would like to not lose Cameron and Whitaker in the one window. Cause he is a quality player. As things stand, we've been pretty shit. We've had most of the chances, but we've been shit. Our attacking mids, going by the match ratings, have done fuck all. Jamie Hamilton's having a really poor game as well. So I'm just going to tell them all that we're not good enough. Not fully sure why we're wearing our away kit, because it doesn't clash with their home kit. Our away kit does clash with their home kit, yet we're playing it today. Maybe it's the white shorts with a white t-shirt, but I doubt it. So yeah, we've had a, a considerable rebuild this summer. And as I said before, I think we're kind of going to be finding ourselves in that position quite a lot. We have a lot of guys whose contracts are up in the summer. <coughs> excuse me, in the summer next year. Um, some are going to be happy to let go. Some I might try and renew. Like McKeever's contract's up. He might be one we try and keep. Whitaker, I would love to try and keep, but at the moment, he wants to move on. Or consider his options, sorry. That's fine. But like we have a lot of guys, especially guys who signed this year, we've only put on one-year deals uh, as well. Which I'm fine with. Like It really was just a case of... like I, I was going through like all of my... McKeever, we're going through like all of like the players we wanted to go for, and we're just getting... like. Other club went. It went. They, they just signed for like other club, other club, other club, other club, and we we're just going down the list. And it got to the stage. I was like, I need bodies in now. So like one year deals for guys who, honestly, we weren't a hundred percent sure on their ability with the option for us to extend. It, it made sense at the time, and I'm kind of happy with what we've done. It's just whether we have the relevant quality, I guess. Like I, I'm kind of. A bit worried about our quality in defence, centre back, but I think Brown, for example, is a great signing. I feel, and I think he'll like prove to be so. Um, but the other three, who the fuck knows? You know, it generally is at that stage. I'm not sure how they're going to play. Hamlin prefers to be the in a back three. Where Ashman plays a ball, playing defender in a back two, not a back two, a back four. Sorry. Um, so yeah, we're kind of needing a. Big season from him, even though we're asking to play. What isn't comfortable for him? We're going to make a couple of changes. Worker's having a poor game. We're going to bring on Wilkinson as a shadow striker. Uh, we're also going to bring on Devine on your match eight for Ali Coote, who's also having quite a poor game. Hamlin's going to come off for Kieran Kinnear. And uh, that'll be our three subs as things stand. Clark to deliver the corner, but nothing happened. 
sounds about right. That's a good ball out to stop. Gets it to McKeever. Oh, he's hit the cross, the post. On your match here, though, gets his first goal for the club and his first of the season. Scoring in an open goal, but we'll take it. It's now a two-goal lead. McKeever is looking a bit tired now, which understandable. I'm going to take him off. Bruno Davidson will be the one playing left wing. Inverted wing on support will do the trick. Uh, our striker and stop both looking tired. Let's bring on Matthews. Go box to box. Try and maybe solidify a little bit more in midfield and give Stott a little bit of a rest. Good save from Molden. That's what we like to see. So far, like, I thought we did arguably maybe our best performance in the... Uh, League Cup. In terms of points, it definitely is, and positioning. I don't know if we, we maybe picked up more draws one year, but like, in, in terms of how we played, like we played pretty poor two of the games, but we still got a result in one of them. But I think overall, probably our best shown in the League Cup. It's, it's, I mean, it's always going to be a, a, a contest that we're never really going to get out the groups of well, we're a League One side. It's just unlikely. But yeah. Looks like Anakius had an okay game, but definitely not the goal threat. Which is a little bit of a concern, I'm not going to lie. Just blow the whistle, ref. Give me this comfortable 2 a win. Go on. Make it 3. Nah, never mind. <laughs> and it's all over. Clyde nil, Elgin City two. That is the second game that we have won, that we've had under like forty percent possession. The other one was the, I think it was maybe the Kilty game. We had thirty seven percent of the possession. We won the game, <laughs> like, and I don't know why we don't have possession, but we're just really shit with it just now. Uh, but yeah, ourselves, Inverness, Montrose and Erdionians all won our first games with Kelty, drawing with Sterling. Cove Rangers, Queen of the South, Peterhead and Clyde all dropping points on opening games of our respective seasons. Join me in just a second as we take on Sterling at our first home league game of the season. Hey everyone, we are back for the second game of the video. I didn't make any changes... Although Hamilton really has started impressing me with something. He has all the stats to be good. Other than maybe the mentals, actually. Hold on. Termination's decent. Flail need off balls. Good, I guess. Position's decent. Vision's pretty decent. He should be doing better than he is. But yeah, we'll, we'll give him we'll give him another game. Uh, but yeah, unchanged side. Let's just go and see if we can turn another. Uh, probably possessionless game into a win for us. We're coming up against two of our former defenders in James Jones and Brad Mackay. I had forgot they'd went to Sterling and I had forgot that Sterling actually got promoted. So, congrats to Sterling. I still hope we fucking hammer you. Now remember, gentlemen, you're taking on two of our shittest centre-halves. We even got rid of them and just brought in loan players instead. So can we just get a good couple of... Why are you installing? Hold on, what the fuck? Why are you installing? What are you installing, PC? Why have you started doing an install? The fuck is going on here? I have NVIDIA just starting to do an install runaway and I can't stop the fucking thing. This is fun. Uh, we have a corner. Can we get the goal? Good clearance from our dice. So I think we'll definitely come back for the Peter Head game, which is on like a week, just over a week before the end of the chance window. So we'll probably be back pretty 
quickly. Um, we'll be doing that. Cause I think I think we should do the games against Peterhead. They were our rivals when we were in League Two with them, even though we're rivalry got lost to an extent, I guess. But uh... oh shit! Oh, something that I completely forgot about. So when we I said I was doing the coaching changes, uh, so we let whoever we're letting go a resign people in your deals, blah blah blah. It turns out that we were actually a coach over the amount of coaches we were allowed, which is absolutely something to do with when we had Draper as a player as well as a coach. Like the game just decided we were only allowed two coaching spaces, but we had three. So I had to ask the board for an extra coaching space. We had to cancel the two guys I wanted to come in. Uh, that's really poor by us. It's offside anyway. Uh, the board then accepted that, and then we went back out and got the coaches in. So Liam Craig former Hibernian St. Johnston. Who the, oh, fuck, our striker just got injured. Who else did he uh, play for? Anyway, he came in as a coach, and Gregor Buchanan is our new assistant manager. I hope that's not a bad injury on Anaku, because that would be awful. We don't have the funds to bring in another striker at the moment. Even on loan, we don't have the wages. Which would mean Ide, McKeever, Wilkinson and Whitaker would have to be our striking options. Not ideal. Uh, can that just fuck off and stop slowing everything down? That'd be grand. Oh god, it's all froze. I'm not, I'm not logging in just now. Fuck off. I'll log in later. Cut back post. ED thought he was maybe going to win that. He didn't. Hmm. Really hope that's not a bad injury on Anaku. Good ball out to McKeever. So that's quite smart by Stott. They advanced up the park, got the ball to McKeever, and then just ran up to collect it again. But it moved us up the park, which we needed. Cut. Cuts it across for Peyton. Out for Clark, and he delivered in a good ball. He did head just straight to the goalkeeper. Decently worked. Um, we're probably not that good at a wing play side anymore, but... Right, stop telling me about him having an injury. Oh, I thought that was in. I thought that was in. Just ignore this just now. I'm not making another sub. I'll make a sub at half time. I just don't want to use another stoppage. <gasps> Peyton Shot comes off the woodwork. I feel like we should have the lead here. We've definitely created a couple of really good chances. <sighs> unlucky, unlucky. Definitely Edie's head, although that was the chance. Oh, lucky. I, and McKeever, actually. Yeah. McKeever's had a couple of chances. Well done, Freeman. Freeman with the corner on the stroke at half time. It's a penalty. Jones has pushed our centre back. Who's stepping up to hit it? I actually have no idea. Peyton. And he's buried it. Didn't realise you were left footed, Ben. Well, I should though. You play left back. But anyway. Good. We can play left back. We take the lead on 56 minutes from the penalty spot through a Ben Peyton penalty. We definitely did deserve the lead this half. We have been the far better team. We've created a lot of good chances. Can we get another? Cut it back, cut it back. Penalty? No. Damn. Thought me I got a penalty on Edie there. Right. 1-0 at half time. 
yeah, look at that XG. We've just not been clinical enough. Uh, yeah, we're getting the shots away. That's good. Kurt's going to come off for on your matchy. It's the only other change I'm going to make. Let's hope we can maybe be a bit more clinical second half. Get that second goal. That would be great. Going to be quite pissed off if both Kurt and, and Aku are out for a while. Since they are two of our more recent signings. And on bigger wages than most other players. Well done. Ide's got to do something good here. On your match, eh? Left foot to McKeever. Ide! He's buried it. Flag stays down. Well done. It's on your match, you left footed. Oh, he's right footed. Okay. Good goal, though. Good bit of play. All came initially from a long ball to McKeever. McKeever's been really good, even in pre season in the uh, League Cup games. Looks like he's really coming into his own this year. Wicker's done okay. He's not really scored or assisted, but he's played decent. It's good to see Ben Payton have a really good game. Unfortunately, Stott's not, apparently. Hamilton's finally got an acceptable uh, 6.7. Like, 6.7 to me is, like, anything from that up. I'm happy. Like, I think an average of 6.7 is okay. It's fine. To me, that's, like, an acceptable performance level. Obviously, if your whole team's hitting 6.7, you're probably playing pretty... Not amazing, not poor, just fine. Um, probably having a nil-nil draw at that point with no shots on goal and no shots against you, but, you know... As one of them. Yeah, we're going to take Stott off. We're going to bring on Matthews, I think. Just watching this here. Freeman on your matchy. Quite poor with that one. Uh, so Matthews come on. Hamilton, after finally praising you for getting a 6.7, you go back to 6.6. .6. Love that for me. We have one more stoppage, two more subs we can make. Half an hour left to play. Right, let's make some subs. Bruno Davidson again is going to come on for uh, McKeever. McKeever's having a good game. He is just tied in again. Let's also bring on... Let's bring on Kieran Kinnear again for Jamie Hamilton. Um, I think Hamilton did have a 6.7, but still, just make that sub. Give Kinnear some minutes. What can Davidson do here? He only scored one goal last season for us, and that was after I triggered his contract extension. I don't know how many assists he got, if he got any. Going to look at the uh, season preview again. So let's see where Clyde and Sterling are predicted to finish. Just see how well we've performed or not performed. Uh, these opening two games. But in my head, we've done quite well, you know. And you've seen that with the, the actual the, the cup game as well. You take the Livingston game out of that. Like, defensively, we look pretty good in terms of the amount of goals we actually conceded. But... It's kind of hard to judge in like, such a small... Uh, group of games and the fact that for the first two games I played it was a sense a second string team as well or started with the second string team did make five changes in that first game but so far I'm going to guess oh no Edie might be getting man of the match actually I was going to say maybe Peyton but it's not Peyton's had a really good game Well done, Matthews. Clark. Matthews. Oh, if he'd let that run to Whitaker. Offside. Probably should have done better with the shot. But it is what it is. Well done on your match, eh?
I'm liking the press we're kind of doing. We're kind of forcing them quite far back with the, uh, the ball. Good catch by Molden. The fact he just caught that midair was quite good. Usually the keeper will palm that away. Free kick. Whitaker's hitting it. I'm going to guess it's over. No. Decent-ish. Kind of comfortable save for Curry, to be honest. Davidson. And he hits it, and he's doubled his goal tally for Elgin. It's his first of the season. <laughs> but well done. Well done, Bruno Davidson. Don't even know who to deflection off of. I'm not that bored, but a 3-0 win, I will take that every day of the week. Especially at home. We sold the exact same amount of season tickets as we did last year. Uh, and the only other bit of news that came up was that I forgot to mention for the last game was the TV deal for our league. We've had, they've signed a three-year deal, but it's reduced money. So we'll get less money if we finish in the same position this year. Um, which is something to kind of keep in note. Not that it matters a great deal. And obviously, finance-wise, we are still quite bad in the minus. But yeah, 3-0 win. Thoroughly deserved. Again, we just don't care about having possession, apparently. Man, the match looks like it's going to Ede... No, went to McKeever. Good. But yeah, very good performance. I'm very happy with that. Very happy with that. Good start to the league. Even if we're definitely maybe not got the best squad or the most depth in every position. Alicut is out for a couple of days. Oh, Jesus. Fuck. Anaku is out for two months with a torn back muscle. Oh, that's not good. That is really not good. Leach had a decent game. Peter Phillips didn't. Crooks only got on for a minute. Yeah, that's not ideal. That is not ideal. Uh, so let's go. Boom. Okay, Mont for Ben. I'm not going to discuss that. I'm not going to discuss that. So yeah, let's quickly look then at the season preview, because I forgot about it. So we were expected to be third. So Sterling and Clyde, bottom half team, Sterling, rock bottom, Clyde, seventh. Pure head expect to stay in this division, which is kind of cool in the sense of we might get a rivalry back. Uh, is that rivalry completely gone? Yeah, it's completely gone. So we have Inverness with us now, but uh, yeah. Schedule then. We are going to come back for... P Do you know what? Let's come back for our old rivals and... I know Joe, but the first time you really get the chance to do with them. We'll come back for the end of the transfer window as well as Peterhead and Inverness. Means I'll wait and play Montrose by myself before the next one. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the transfer bits I've done so far. I'm kind of stuck now until Hunter moves on, so fingers crossed he finds a club. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.